chocolate. On the retro show today. Ha, oh, that's my bubbles. Now the question is... It's the Commodore Swifty for 36 pixel, Eddie. It's FPGA replacement for the Vic 2. Wow. <laughs> Welcome. No, your name's not Mel. This is episode 12. Oh, hey, Chip Dipper. Easy now. Respect. Welcome, everybody. Goes to the Gozerian as well. Welcome to the Retro Show. We have loads of retro fun coming up today, including these unboxings. But first, retro news. I'm fine, everything's fine. Um, thank you for taking over when I, I had to go walk my dad. But anyway, <laughs> here is old news. And first up, have you heard about this? Oh, no. Yeah, Pontiac makers of the Knight Rider car are suing Tesla and Google over their self-driving car technology. Wow. In case you happen to be watching this on April 1st. But in real news, Icon64 announced that they've been offered the chance to do an official sequel to Impossible Mission by the rights holders. So it's going to be Impossible Mission 3. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, Doo -doo. indeed. It actually goes, another visitor, stay a while, stay forever. Ha, 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 ha. That's my bubbles. Wait, that's not Christmas yet. <laughs> but yes, Lady Fractic did a, uh, a lockdown live stream playing Impossible Mission, the retro version on the mm -hmm. on the Switch. So, okay. so I've still got some duct tape stuck in my throat. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Next. Have you seen this? I think I showed you this, didn't I? Is it a Roomba? Yes. I'm sorry, in a robotic vacuum? It is indeed. <laughs> so Commodore brand name is, as you know, owned by one or two companies, but it has been licensed to be used on this vacuum cleaner, the Commodore CVR 300. It's the Commodore Swift D4. That's very good. Uh, uh, trademark. Trademark that Lady quickly, Fractic. because as we all know, CVR stands for... Computer Vacuum... Robot. Robot. Love it. But yeah, there it is. And I've, I've got to be honest, when the pet phone came out, the Commodore branded, I was a little like, mm. it's just a rebranded Android. Mm. <laughs> but I, pardon you, but I quite like the thought of a little Commodore tootling around by my feet and just cleaning up after the dogs and stuff. Tootling for yeah. the Americans is puttering. Or pootering, people sometimes say. She pooters around in the pool when we throw she treats in the does. pool. She does. She just... She goes foraging. Commodore vacuum robot. Um, should we be expecting release in the mail? We'll see. Uh, next up, another vacuum. <laughs> next up, did you see this? No. Apparently I have not been... Following the retro news? Following the, yeah, I've been a bit busy. This is kind of cool. Apple's exploring the possibility of integrating a fully functioning Mac within a keyboard, reminiscent of home computers like the C64 and Spectrum. Exactly. Uh, and also like the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, and here is a patent. Keyboard is a computer. Figure 100. I actually quite like it in yellow, although I think that's just to illustrate the patent. Yellow is his favorite color. It is. Can you tell? That's green. Fudge. I'm also colorblind. So any color within that spectrum is my favorite color. In one example, the keyboard computer provides IO port number 604. No idea what that means. But anyway, we look forward to- I like that I was like, mm-hmm, and you were like, mm-mm. No clue. But we look forward to seeing if that actually becomes a reality in the future, Marty. Don't make me get the duct tape again. <laughs> I gotta stop saying fudge. But that I think is it for old news. That was old news. It was old news. And now, of course, it is time for I See What You Meme. I'll see what he memes. And first up. After looking around the room for two minutes, my wife says, I can't find the case for wood. 
Oh. Um, now, this has been sent in by several people over the last few months, mm. so it's time we featured it. It's Golden Grahams infringing on our copyright. Retro their, recipe. With their women now made with real honey. Isn't that right, Sugar? Um, the thing about this for me is it's a retro recipe, which means that it was originally made with real honey. And then all they're doing is admitting that at some point they stopped and probably used high fructose corn syrup. And now they're like back to using quality products and rebranding. If you hadn't said any of that, we'd have got a lifetime supply from General Mills. You don't even like that. <laughs> uh, D.W. Berman also sent me this picture uh, just to illustrate the similarities. Um, so we'll be forwarding that to our lawyers. Mm -hmm. Just kidding, General Mills. Love your cereal. In fact, I love it so much. I'm a cereal killer. I'm a, cer a cereal entrepreneur. So anyway, next up. Honey, you left a disc on the kitchen counter. I need a clear space, so I put it someplace safe. System restore disc, do not erase. Do you think that's real? Probably just a gimmick. It's got to be a gimmick, yeah. For those millennials who don't know, putting a magnet on a disc will erase it. Kids will never know the hassle of overboiling eggs to replace your mouse ball every month and a half. Now, if you're a millennial watching this, so the mouse ball looks like an egg yolk, and when the mouse ball wore down, we had to just go and hard boil an egg. Bo boil it for a bit longer than usual, about three days, and it became uh, exactly the right size. I don't know how the chickens knew that to do it that right size, but anyway. Well, you know, chicken lips. Chicken lips, 16 yeah. <laughs> for the win. Yeah. And another Mario. I sincerely hope that man is okay. We, we, we did look into it and he's completely in the dark. Um, <laughs> it's, so, it's so wrong to laugh at that. Um, he is fine though, seriously. Can we check if he's fine before we broadcast this? Yeah. No, okay, thanks. Finally. I usually avoid posting adult links, but this is an exception. Link, he come to town. Oh no. Come to say the princess town. Thank you very much. Going away okay. Another Luckily, that's the end of the segment. One oh. link saves the day. Hallelujah! Where's that tape? <laughs> link. That's Real the end it. of. I see what you mean. He saw what I meant. And now, indeed, it is time for a fun boxing. But first, and on that note, as well, I've got a message from. From Getting Closet. This is my friend Bonnie. And we like to tell about you, PCB Way. Or you could give PCB for $5. That's the you, Perry Fractic. <gasps> Bunny! Poor Bunny. There. She'll be little Lady Fractic. There you go, Bunny. There you Yay. go, Bunny. <laughs> she got jealous. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's mini fractic. I love that, Harley. Thank you so much for sending that in. Thank she's, you very much. Apparently she can use email now, which is great. Very um, impressive. Her dad sent that in, and I love the way she says, Doyers. Five, five doyers. Five doyers. But she's right, because PCB Way make fantastic quality PCBs, starting at just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for... Printed Pretty cute bunny. Oh, bunny! Thank you, PCB Way, and thank you, Harley Fractic, from the game closet on YouTube. Pew tube. Um, so now we'll get this out of the way and uh, do a little unboxing. Woohoo! No, just unboxing. Okay. She really wants to hit me this episode. Oh. Now, this is from Tom Wilson. Um, Tom, we've known on this channel for a long time. He sent me the Ultimate 64 circuit board that is inside that Commodore 64, which I'm forever grateful for because I've started using that more and more lately. Um, even just got Wi-Fi running on it. Uh, <laughs> Such a weird statement. So he's one of our patrons as well. Did you get me a guitar? Seems to be, doesn't it? Ooh. Much excite. Ooh. 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 Now, a USB cable, of course, which every retro computer needs. 
We have a replica Altair 8800 computer, uh, which is the same family of computer that starred in War Games that uh, Matthew Broderick's character had in his bedroom. And this is a modern iteration. This may explain everything. The Periphratic Lady Fractic and Assorted Puppies Fractic. This is your new Altair Duino 8800, a modern replica of the iconic Altair 8800 computer, widely considered to be the first widely marketed personal computer and sparked the revolution that led to the home computer scene we have today. Complete with a two megahertz Intel 8080, 256 bytes of RAM and 36 pixel Eddie. 36, Eddie is it? 36 pixel LED display. This was the most popular home computer of 1975, probably because it was the only one. <laughs> it was two. Over time, the Altair spawned multiple clone systems, including the world famous War Games, IMSAI 8080, and a number of popular CPM computers sold in the late 70s and early 80s. As we know, the Amstrad PCW runs CPM as does the Commodore 128, mm -hmm. which we refurbed and restored recently. Thank you for all you do. And he says, the world wouldn't be the same without you. That's so sweet, thank you. Um, we do hope that what we do here makes a tiny impact and makes the world maybe a little bit of a happier place. Now, the question is, we don't have time to play with this properly. I've, from what I've seen, it's gonna deserve its own yeah. full episode. That's very cool. So maybe we'll do a quick bites episode about this very soon. <laughs> It's gonna look lovely on display. Where should we put it? Five hours later. I'm good. Love it. Thank you again, Tom. Next up. Chocolate. And last up. Oh. Read me. Read me. Dot <laughs> text. Dot text. Mm. And this is from Randy Rossi. He's written a lot here about it, but I already know a lot about it because I've been following this project. This is his FPGA replacement for the VIC-2 graphics chip in the Commodore 64, which I think is the last thing that hasn't yet been recreated. I'm so excited to see this. Now, as you guys know, myself and one stage, AKA Sean Harrington, um, who also created Perry Fabric over there, <laughs> the puppet, um, we created the VIC-2 squared, which is a switcher that allows you to switch between PAL and NTSC big chips, but you still need old big chips to put in it. This does the same thing, but self-contained, you don't need any old chips, which of course are getting scarcer and scarcer, which is scarier and scarier. Scarcier. But look at this. Wow. Now, instead of drooling over it, we should just probably go and pop it in a Commodore 64, which is what's going to happen on this episode's Quick Bites. Welcome. HDMI cable, so we're here at Best Buy. Puppy Park takes forward as usual. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, there's a sticker with your name, okay. your receipt, and with my name on it. Cool, thanks All a right. lot. Have a good one. You too. She was a nice lady, yeah, wasn't she? Okay, should we go home? Do you want to go home? Dev and April are awaiting the pleasure of your company. quality on this Sony Trinitron was already good, and maybe the camera doesn't do Randy's board, named Kawari by the way, 
uh, much justice, but it's definitely a step up in quality. And it comes with a config program where you can change color palettes, frequencies, run some demos like these ones of Baby Yoga, Yoda, <coughs> and Puppy Fractic. Isn't that her? Uh, and it even gives the C64 this. Look at that, it's 80 column mode. Look up here. And best of all, you can switch from PAL to NTSC, as evidenced by the music speeding up here from 50 to 60 hertz. I'm really impressed with the Kawarai and would actually recommend this over my VIC-2 squared board for image quality alone. Although purists can, I suppose, always use mine if they just want to use original chips. Great job, Randy Rossi. Can't wait for the final iteration to become available for everyone. Wow, wouldn't the world be a boring place without the C64? Well now, back to Purple Fractal and goes of the Gozerian in the studio. Well, wasn't that wonderful? Thank you so much, Randy Rossi, for sending that in. Uh, I should mention that he asked me not to make a full episode about it because with the worldwide chip shortage, he's having a hard time getting hold of these and might have to um, switch to a plan B for a different chip. So I will send the link to his YouTube channel so you can follow the project, but we're not quite there for being able to mass order uh, or mass produce these. Um, but we can have a mass debate about it, at least. What? To like talk about it a lot. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, from his homebrew to more homebrews and this. Hi, I would like to, to demonstrate a cool project I just have finished. I'm taking a physical object, a, a ping pong rocket. I'm detecting it using a, a camera, a USB camera, and I'm controlling the game. I think it's a, a really cool and new experience to play uh, Atari games. This code can be run on a Raspberry Pi and can be connected to an original uh, Atari. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Eran. You can find all the details on GitHub. All the links for this and anything else in this show are in the description, as always. Exactly. Next up, we have this homebrew multi CPU 8 bit microcomputer by Bernardo Castrup, aka The Byte Attic. Now this reminds me very much of... The Commander X16. <laughs> um, basically a big blue PCB. So this is an open source educational platform. Uh, you can use either a Z80 or 65CO2 CPU. It boasts a whopping 64 kilobytes. Wow. Do that again. 64 kilobytes, <laughs> about that big, of RAM. Uh, now you can buy these in kit form not kit from Knight Rider. One T. Or uh, pre-assembled from the Dutch Home Computer Museum, which we are big fans of because they're currently housing the Amiga 4000 from Titanic that of course we had here and sold for charity. And that's where you can find it now. Now the museum had a really hard time during COVID closures and stuff. So all these purchases do help them. Uh, I think they were quite near bankruptcy. So, a very cool project for a very good cause. <laughs> Hello. This is a mashup kit in DeLorean, as you may have noticed, from Mike Gwynn. And he said a few years ago, where do you think he's from? Uh, what's his name? Mike Gwynn? Mike Gwynn. This guy from Australia. No, 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 no. A few years ago, no. I wondered what kid and docks DeLorean. Um, he's, he's English. A few years ago, I wondered what Kit and Doc's DeLorean would look like if they were ever combined. But not only that, but their combined capabilities. Kit certainly wouldn't have any trouble hitting 88 miles per hour. But imagine turbo boosting over a vehicle and vanishing into the past. Ooh. He's got a lovely voice, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for sending that in. And I think that means we're at the end of home brews. Home brews. How about a nice, tasty, relaxing soothing bowl of nostalgia flakes. Mm. Well, first up, this is from Al Miner, and he's sharing a tour of his grandpa's Tandy computers from the 70s to the 90s. 
His grandpa lived to the age of 102. Wow. He's quite young. Having worked as a technician in WW2, <laughs> so you said WWW, World War II, and he actually trained B-17 and B-52 bombers to use their bomb guidance system, uh, which is an early analog computer. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this video, we've been watching his TRS-80 Model 1, his TRS Model 2 with expansion module, Tandy line printer we just saw, TRS Model 2, TRS Model 2 disk system, <laughs> there's a TRS-80 again, uh, a TRS Model 4, and this Tandy 1000. And wow. there's, there's a whole computer collection. Very cool. And you can see an in-depth of this video on his YouTube channel with the links in the description box below as always. As always, and also as always, anyone who donates anything to the channel for unboxing, for unboxing, or sends in Nostalgia Flakes, um, will get an RR badge. All you've got to do is fill out the form at our website, put your address in the uh, box if you want a badge. This will get you free entry to retro museums, including the Dutch Home Computer Museum. Which you should go to anyway. And pay, pay anyway. Yeah. And next up, Patreon of the channel, Tim Cook. Wow. He says he's not that Tim Cook, with a name like Cookie. No wonder he likes retro recipes. But he spent COVID lockdown creating a space for all his retro consoles. He's a, a lot neater than I am, clearly. If you look at the cables under my desk, it doesn't look like this. That's so cool. That's very cool. I wish I could keep mine like this, but they're in constant use. So I'm forever just ripping something out and putting something back on the shelf. He's always playing with himself. <laughs> look at that. Whoa, it's got the Wii controllers, the Wii. SNES controllers down Original there. PlayStation, a Sega. Se what did you make me? Sega? Sega. No, Sega. <laughs> what do you say? Sega. Ah, Sega. Sega. What was that one? That's the um, Dreamcast? That's the Sony PlayStation 1. But it's the PS1, the, the mini version they released. Oh, because Dreamcast was also like the same color, wasn't it? With a disc? Same sort of shape, yeah. yeah. It had a round. I didn't have one of those. Next up, Arndt Muller has sent in this. Uh, this was a Silicon Graphics Tezro, and this little one is using it as a seat. They were quite expensive back in the day, but um, uh, I mean, if you can still make a use out of it, why not? So there she is. What's she doing her homework? She's playing computer games. She seems to be browsing the web, looking up. Neopets? <laughs> is that what that is? Uh, I don't know, but Neopets is making a comeback if anybody used to play that. I'm sure the internet will tell us exactly I'm sure what it is. <laughs> at least 16 people will put underneath. <laughs> what it is. And finally, David Schaller says his career as an application developer began as a teen programming the Commodore 64 in 1986. Is this the Wild West? I see horse-drawn carriages, what looks well, like looks sheriff actually, stars. Yeah, but that looks like a um, carousel. Carousel. I need to know. It's, but the point wasn't the wallpaper. I got distracted. At, at, at the policeman's fairground. Um, but what's this picture? Now I'm getting distracted. <laughs> But that's very cool. Thank you for sending that in, David Schaller, Tim Cook, and of course, Aunt Mueller and L Minor, not to be confused with G Major. <laughs> Manic Minor, I was going to say. But that is the end of Nostalgia Flakes, and actually, the end of our show. Oh, so many paper cuts. Oh gosh. <laughs> One day, I will give you a paper cut. This puppy Fractic's divorcing me as well. Oh, bye. Bye. Too much violence. Is that. Oh! Well, Puppy Factory the first is actually the one that's afraid of paper. She used to be when she could see it. When she could see and hear. <laughs> if you took a tissue and just brought it near her face, she would panic as if it was like a chainsaw. Bless her. Um, but she she's no longer with sight or much hearing. Or hearing. But uh, sleeping in the other room. She still gets around. She's still just rocking around. She finds her way around the house. She does. Well, I think that is... All we've got time for, so thanks so much for watching. As always, subscribe and support below, and cheerio! Mm -hmm. Now we'll be putting this on eBay at Place for Bids at the link in the description.